Consider the following tic-tac-toe board. Its X's turn to move. While three squares might appear available, two of them would lead to defeat. So strategically, it's a choice between playing to lose or not losing. In this situation, I'd like to introduce the perceptron neuron, the simplest artificial neural network. The perceptron can assist the X player in choosing the optimal move. Firstly, the perceptron neuron is simply a function, and like any function, it receives an input and returns an output. In this case, the input is the current game state, which is encoded as a vector with the following numbers for each cell. One for X, minus one for O, and zero for empty spaces. In this case, we have the following vector, which we'll call X. Next, we evaluate the different choices for the next move. We assign a value of minus one to bad choices and plus one to the optimal choice. The perceptron neuron then calculates the dot product between the input vector and a vector of weights, adding a bias term to the result. For example, suppose we have the following weights and the following bias. Finally, the result of this operation is passed through the activation function, which determines the neuron's answer. In this case, we use a function that outputs one if the sum is greater than zero and minus one otherwise. So, if the sum after the dot product and bias is three, the activation function will indeed return positive one, representing the correct answer in this example. When studying a new subject, I find it helpful to explore the etymology of its key terms. In this case, the word perceptron is a portmanteau, meaning it's formed by combining two words, percept, which refers to the mental process of receiving and interpreting information, and the suffix tron, often signifying an instrument or tool. So, perceptron literally translates to instrument of perception. This name reflects its original purpose, conceived in 1943 by Warren McCulloch and Walter Pitts as a device for image recognition. However, today, the perceptron primarily refers to an algorithm rather than a specific machine. Now let's take a closer look at how a perceptron neuron works. Comparing it to a human, a perceptron is similar to a person with dichotomous thinking. Dichotomous thinking refers to the tendency to view things in terms of binary opposites, such as black or white, good or bad, or all or nothing. This is why the perceptron neuron is also known as the binary neuron. Internally, this binary neuron has a sort of separator. This separator helps the perceptron determine if a new input, or say, a new sample of something, belongs to one class or another. Mathematically, this separator is represented in the perceptron as a hyperplane. A hyperplane is like a multi-dimensional wall separating one side from another. Imagine a dot dividing a line, for example, or a line dividing a plane, or a plane dividing a 3D space, and so on. A hyperplane can exist in any dimension. If we want to draw an analogy with the human mind, we can view this hyperplane as a prejudice, just like a person who forms a prejudice based not on actual experience, but on what others tell them. For example, through social media, the perceptron algorithm also needs us to provide labeled samples that defines what belongs to one category and what belongs to another. In essence, the perceptron algorithm depends on information. Have you heard about artificial intelligence that learns by itself? Well, Perceptron neurons aren't like that. They need information to learn. This information in the field of computer science is known as a data set. Let's explore this concept with an example of the perceptron algorithm in action. Consider the following data set. This data set contains two dimensional samples, which means each sample has two features. We want to build a hyperplane that separates the samples labeled minus one from those labeled positive one. Since we're working in a 2D space, this hyperplane translates to a simple line. Mathematically, 
we can express this line in general form. We need to determine the vector w and bias term b that define the optimal hyperplane. We start by initializing them to zero. Then, we go through each sample and label in our dataset, performing the following steps. We keep going through the whole dataset multiple times, checking each sample and fixing the hyperplane when needed. We stop when everything looks good all the way through without any changes for each sample. In this example, the dataset went through the process four times and finally found the optimal hyperplane. As a final example, let's see how to train perceptron neurons to play tic-tac-toe. To simplify things, we'll assume the machine always starts in the upper left corner. This approach will generate an optimal strategy for 90 possible game board states, identifying the best move for each. Each optimal move corresponds to the square the perceptrons should choose. Since there are eight available squares, these will be our dataset labels or classes, ranging from zero to seven. The samples themselves will be the game board positions at each state, each cell digitized with one for X, minus one for O, and zero for empty spaces. We then pre-process the data by normalizing each sample in the data set. We achieve this by dividing each sample by its Euclidean norm. We now proceed with the classification task. We train a perceptron for each unique pair of classes. For instance, one perceptron distinguishes samples labeled as zero from those labeled as one. Another handles samples labeled as zero versus samples labeled as two, and so on. Considering our eight possible labels, this approach creates a total of 28 perceptrons. During gameplay, the machine selects the optimal square or label by considering the outcomes of these 28 perceptrons. This process, called the one versus one strategy, reduces multi-class classification to multiple binary classification problems. In this specific case, the strategy, using perceptrons, creates an unbeatable tic-tac-toe classifier assuming the machine always starts in the upper left corner. In the description below, you'll find the tic-tac-toe dataset and the code used in this video. I hope you found this video about perceptrons helpful. Thanks for watching.